Hello, I'm Dr. Chad Price, a professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Central Florida College of Medicine. In this 10 minute talk, we're going to talk about nutrition for bone health through foods and supplements. This first part is on calcium and vitamin D, and the second part will be about some of the less appreciated nutrients that are equally important. This is part of a presentation that I made at the American Orthopedic Association meeting in Washington titled Own the Bone. This is a program established by orthopedic surgeons nationally to try to raise awareness of the prevention of osteoporosis and prevention of fractures. In addition, I have a book published that's available on Amazon that explains my own personal journey in this area and why I became so interested in nutrition for bone health. For the scientists in the group, there's a scientific publication titled The Essential Nutrients for Bone Health. It's published in a peer-reviewed journal, the Open Orthopedics Journal, and it's available on the internet. One of the things I learned that seemed shocking is that after the age of 50, a woman's risk of dying from a hip fracture is the same as her risk of dying from breast cancer. There's a marked decrease in bone mineral density in all bones following a spine or hip fracture. And if the bone density doesn't recover, then there's a risk of a second fracture. And that's because after a hip fracture, there may be complications. Approximately 25% of women die in the first year following a hip fracture. In order to heal that fracture, they take calcium and other minerals from the other bones in order to create the healing. So those other bones have to be rehabilitated in order to avoid the second fracture. So the best thing is to avoid that first fracture. In 2004, the United States Surgeon General issued a report called Bone Health and Osteoporosis. This report said, quote, the evidence clearly suggests that individuals can do a great deal to promote their own bone health. And that's why it's so important that you take charge of your own bone health program to prevent that first fracture. Recently, the United States Preventive Services Task Force issued a report on vitamin D and calcium supplementation to prevent cancer and osteoporotic fractures in adults. For this talk, we'll focus on their findings regarding osteoporotic fractures. The report said, the USPSTF recommends against daily supplementation with less than 400 international units of vitamin D3 and 1,000 milligrams of calcium for the primary prevention of fractures in non-institutionalized postmenopausal women. So that means that ordinary adult women who've never had a fracture are not going to have much prevention by less than 400 units of vitamin D and 1,000 milligrams of calcium. That's not enough to prevent the first fracture. Well, the news media picked this up, and here's a report that says USPSTF says no to vitamin D and calcium for older women. And that's not quite what the report said. They didn't, the media didn't quite get it right. What this news announcement should have said was that the USPSTF recommends against daily supplementation with less than 400 international units of vitamin D3. In fact, the reports said that the largest trial in this study included the analysis of a randomized controlled trial called the Women's Health Initiative. This was a study of over 36,000 women aged 50 to 79 years of age. The task force report said it is important to note that the dose of vitamin D used in the Women's Health Initiative would not be considered sufficient today. The task force report went on to say that research is needed to determine whether daily supplementation with more than 400 international units of vitamin D and 1,000 milligrams of calcium reduces fracture risk. In fact, that's already been reported in the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2005 in a paper by Bischoff Ferrari that stated that supplementation with 800 to 1,000 international units per day is associated with lower risk of fracture, while supplementation with 400 units per day is not as effective for fracture reduction. 
This was recently confirmed in the July 2012 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. So it's important to note that 400 units is not enough and it's preferred that you receive 800 to 1,000 international units per day as a supplement of vitamin D. The National Osteoporosis Foundation has confirmed this. They said, quote, We have known for a long time that calcium and vitamin D are critical, but are not enough alone to prevent fractures. The daily needs from diet and supplements are 1,200 milligrams of total calcium and 800 to 1,000 international units of vitamin D. However, the task force report noted that 1,000 milligrams of supplemental calcium is associated with an increased risk of kidney stones, and this has been noted by other authors as well. The May 2012 Heart Journal reported that calcium supplements increased the risk of myocardial infarction, or heart attacks, and that's even a bigger concern. They noticed that the risk of heart attack was more pronounced in those taking only calcium supplements. So if you took it with vitamin D or vitamin K or both, then your risk of heart attacks was decreased. Fortunately, there was no increase in total mortality, just an increase in the number of heart attacks. And this report did not assess the lower levels of supplementation compared to higher levels. So there wasn't a stratification to say that some calcium is okay, but more than 1,000 is bad. That has been done by other authors, Boland and Salati, separately, reported that supplementation with more than 500 milligrams of calcium per day is associated with a slightly increased risk of cardiovascular events. They also noted less effect when taken with other supplements like vitamin D and vitamin K, and they also noticed no increase in total mortality. Now, how much calcium do you need? Well, calcium intake and fracture risk actually reaches the lowest point with a total intake of at least 750 milligrams a day. So if you're taking more than 750 milligrams of calcium, total calcium per day, not supplement, but diet and supplement, then your fracture risk is as low as it's going to be. It stays pretty low until you get to about 1,500 milligrams of total calcium, and then it actually starts to rise. When you get to 2,000 milligrams of total calcium, the risk of fractures actually increases. So there's an optimum amount as far as fractures are concerned, and it seems to be between 750 and 1,500 milligrams per day. More and less should be avoided. Well, what about the, diet, the dietary availability or the bioavailability of dietary calcium? How do you absorb it? The NIH and other reports have stated that more than 500 milligrams of calcium at one time is poorly absorbed, and they've also noticed that it's best taken with meals and with vitamin D or vitamin K. How about calcium carbonate or calcium citrate? These are equally absorbed with meals, so the form may not be as important. They're also equally absorbed on an empty stomach, except for those taking medicines to reduce stomach acid, and these are called proton pump inhibitors and H2 antagonists. So if you want to take your calcium on an empty stomach, then it's okay to do that unless you're taking some of these medications for heartburn and acid reflux. If you're doing that, then it's best to take it with meals or to take calcium citrate. So the type of calcium may not be as important as the other factors that affect calcium absorption and utilization because this depends more on the metabolic health than on the brand of calcium. For example, estrogen, vitamin D, and proteins influence the absorption of calcium. Milk proteins in particular help calcium absorption. A lot of adults don't tolerate milk, so yogurt and cheeses are a little easier on the stomach for most adults. On the other hand, vitamin K, boron, silicon, and inositol improve the efficiency of calcium and how it gets into the bone. So how much calcium do we need? As we said, 1,200 milligrams per day total, counting dietary and supplements, are what we need. More than a total of 2,000 milligrams increases the risk of kidney stones, increases the risk of heart attacks, and may increase the risk of hip fractures. Now the median intake in the United States for adult women 
is 600 milligrams a day. So most people need some supplement. But a 500 milligram supplement is sufficient for most women. Now vitamin D and calcium are known to promote bone health. They're very important. But the current emphasis is more on vitamin D than on calcium, although both are important. And higher doses of vitamin D are preferred in the range of 800 international units to 1,000 international units per day. I agree with Munger, who in 1999 said the preoccupation to date with calcium has resulted in less emphasis on the role of other nutrients in bone quality and osteoporosis. And those other nutrients, in addition to calcium and vitamin D, include silicon, magnesium, vitamin K, boron, and several others. And those will be discussed in part two of this presentation. Thank you.